during our science group, Ariel, I don't know if you remember this in Sienna, we talked about pumpkins and we talked about some things we know about pumpkins, like that they're orange, they grow on the ground in a pumpkin patch, there's seeds and slimy goo on the inside. And so today, Sienna oh. and Ariella, we are gonna do something different. We are going to compare and contrast pumpkins Pumpkin. with butternut squash, which is another type of squash Pumpkin. vegetable. So our work today is going to be comparing pumpkins and butternut squash. All right, I'm gonna stop my share so that you can see better. What do you notice yeah. as some, some things? Yeah. What do you observe about pumpkins and butternut squash? Pumpkins grow at orchards or farms. Pumpkins grow at orchards or Why are you farms. spelling it? I'm writing down your smart words. And we're going to start going over this. All right, so if you are back on Zoom, you are doing what I'm doing. Thank you for so many cameras on and everyone back on Zoom looking at me. All right, so I saw so much awesome work when it came to our do now. So I thought we'd start together by reading out the problem. So Rafti, can you come off mute and read us the problem for number one? Noel bought two tacos and paid $6. At this rate, how much would five tacos cost? Awesome. So what was our first step for solving this problem? What was our first step? Raise your hand to share out. Or what was the first thing you did? And type the scholarship meant to Daniel, Roki. All right, Roki, come off mute. What was the first thing you did to solve this problem? One of the first things I did is that I looked at the picture on the top of the problem and it said three bucks for um one one taco for three dollars and so then why are you new so i had to do the multiples of one and three so on the price on the dollar side i put three six and like the rest of the multiples of threes and then the multiple of ones and then that's how i knew how to do the rest of the problem awesome and i love that you're calling them multiples because that means you're multiplying to get them and you're not just skip counting. So today we're going to continue on with the Google Drawings tool. So say I want to move this crescent. Right? Here's a crescent from before. One thing I forgot to show you guys was this ye little yellow guy. This little yellow one. We'll move the pitch of it so it'll make it more concave. So I put two eggs into a pan, and I'm going to cook them over easy. So this is our final project. If you want, you can put them together like a sandwich, one on top of each other, or you can eat them like that. Something that I notice on Picasso's, too, is in some areas, he makes it look really dark, like a shadow. So you can do that by just pressing down a little bit harder. So if you notice, I'm pressing down a little bit harder with my pencil in some areas, maybe closer to my object, I might create a darker value of my red, and that just means a darker color, a darker shade of the red. So we've been working on our Starry Night play, and you guys have created some wonderful protagonists and antagonists for your play. The next step is talking about the setting. We already know that the inspiration for our play was the Starry Night House. But we are going to create a scene where the protagonist, okay, whoever you created, for me it was Hansel, and the antagonist, again, whoever you created, for me it was Stefan, they're going to meet up somewhere. Creek 
darkened all its chambers, and strange and frightening sounds echo through the halls. When the candlelights flicker, or the air is deathly still, that is the time when ghosts are present, practicing their terror with ghoulish delight. When the crypt doors creak and the tombstones quake, spooks come out for a swinging wake. Happy haunts materialize and begins to vocalize. Three winning ghosts come out to socialize. Now don't close your eyes. Come with us and you will see this our town of Halloween. This is 